Are you tired of your application crashing and slowing down? Do you want to know what's going on and get notified as soon as possible? In this video, I will teach you how to implement health check in .NET to keep an eye on your external dependencies like database and Redis cache. You will learn also how to send alert messages into Slack to get notified when your application is no longer healthy. So let's jump into the code. I have here an ASP.NET API application where I'm using Entity Framework with three minimal APIs to get, to get my ID and to add a to-do item. Very simple implementation and I can run the application and if I go to Postman, I can query a to-do and get a result. So make sure to subscribe. Now, the only way to make sure my application is up and running is basically querying something and actually testing the application. But that is not efficient because you will not be able to test everything to make sure that everything is running. So to implement the health check, we can use the built-in .NET health check library. And basically by doing something like builder.services.add health check. And here we are we added the health check to our service registration and we can map our health check result to let's call it health. This is a well-known convention for any health endpoint like underscore health. So now if we run the application and we go to Postman, we can actually test if our application is healthy or not. You notice here it is healthy. But let's try to simulate uh, a failure in our database. Let's say I'm going to stop my database server here. And now if I go to query my health endpoint, it's still healthy. Why is that? Because we didn't specify any health check configuration for our application. And to do that, let's start by creating a new health uh, check for our SQL server. We can call it, let's first create a directory health and then SQL server health check. And here we need to implement, let's stop the application. We need to implement I health check interface. And inside of the interface, we have check health async uh, method that we need to return the health check result if it is healthy or unhealthy. Uh, to implement the simple SQL Server check, let's create a string, connection string. And in our constructor, let's add the configuration. And here, connection string will be equal to configuration. Okay. Dot get connection string default connection. And now in our check health, we can try to open a connection and actually execute a query like a select one or something. To do that, let's do let's change that to async and then await using var connection equal new SQL connection connection string and then await connection dot open async. Let's pass the cancellation token and then we can create a SQL command something like await using var command equal new SQL command select one with the connection here and then await command.execute scalar async and path the cancellation talk. Something like that is enough and then we can return health check dot health. If it failed, let's try to wrap it out with a try catch. And here we can return new health check result. The status is unhealthy description database is unhealthy with the exception 
And now let's go back to the program.cs and actually add that check. So add check SQL Server Health Check. And we can name it SQL Server. Perfect. And if we are on it now, in Docker, it still stopped. So there is no database connection. Let's try to call the health endpoint. Here we are getting to our health check. We are creating a connection and actually trying to implement, trying to query, and it is unhealthy. This is not very descriptive uh, result for our health point. Like if we have multiple checks and let's go back here and create multiple check. I'm going to create another check. Let's say Redis health check. And here we can, for now, I'm going to return healthy. So I'm going to return task dot from result health check dot healthy. But you got the idea. And here I can add another check, add check, Redis health check, call it Redis. And now there is no way that I can know what service is unhealthy here because the result is not descriptive. But fear not, with a, a third party a NuGet package, you can implement that. And the NuGet package called healthchecks.ui, you can install install the UI client here. And once installed, you will be able to configure our endpoint here with the options of displaying that UI, better UI uh, result. To do that, let's create a new option here. And here we change the response writer to UI response writer dot write health check UI response. And that's it. Now, if we are on the application and our database is still stopped, we can run the health endpoint and we will get a better response and a better result. Yep. So we got unhealthy for a total status and we have multiple entries. We have SQL Server and we have the exception and that is, and it is healthy. And now if I run the database server in Docker, running. Now, if we query the health endpoint, we will get healthy with multiple uh, entries. We can leverage from other NuGet packages. Like if we check for health check dot SQL server, because we are using SQL server, we can use the existing one. And let me install that. And now in my program.cs, I can removes this one here and do something like add SQL server. And we need to specify the connection string for it. Builder.configuration.get connection string default connection. So there is plenty of health check already existing in NuGet that you can use. You have, you have Redis, you have RabbitMQ, Postgres, Mongo, Azure Storage, anything that you want, there is an implementation for it. So there is no need to actually create your own custom health check. You can do that for your own custom implementation or your, or your custom microservices endpoint or such. So that is nice. Now we can, if we run the application to test this one, send we will have healthy and if we stop the database and we test it out we will get unhealthy with a proper description and exception pretty cool now i want to show you how to be notified on slack uh, when your application is not healthy anymore and i'm going to use azure function with a timely trigger uh, function to check the health endpoint and then send a message to Slack to be notified, you and your team. So let's start by creating a new Azure function. Let's call it to do, to do dot func. I'm using the isolated worker so I can use a program.cs and the latest.net 8 here. Let's create it. 
And in my function, notice here I have a program. I can configure the services now. Let me add a time trigger function. Let's call it to do health check. And notice here once, let me stop. Once I added the timer trigger, I need to add the extensions, the timer, new get package. Let me do that from here. It's now added. Uh, we can change our scheduler to, to be like every minute, maybe every seconds. It's up to you. If you want to spam your Slack with unhealthy messages. And we can add here, run on startup true. So we can trigger that once we run the application. Let's remove that and let's start implementing our to do health check function. The implementation is simple. I need to first call the API underscore health in our to do API. And if I'm getting unhealthy result, I need to send a message to the Slack uh, API webhook. So to do that, I'm going to create a new class called to do API client. What I'm showing you now is the proper way to use the HTTP client in .NET. So let's inject HTTP the client here. And let's create a new method called check health async like this. And for our to do API client, we need to register the HTTP client for it. So we can go back here and do something like configure services, services dot add HTTP client. We can specify the type of the class, which is to do API client. And here we can specify the base address, which is new URI. And here we can specify the base address. I'm going to copy it from here. Yes, you can make that a configuration. So you can specify it once in your app, but for our uh, test case here, let's put it as is. And that's it for, for to do API client here, we can actually call the API. So bar response equal await. Let's make it async HTTP client dot get async. And it is the health endpoint. And now we need to convert the content of the response to an actual uh, class that we can use for that. I have created a few classes here that represent the response that we are getting. I don't want to use the UI library client classes because we will not be able to, to deserialize the response to the proper format. So I created a simple one here with what we need basically to implement, to display. And here we can do something like this, reading the stream and then deserialize it using the system.txt package. And here let's return the health report. Now, if you go back to the, uh, to the function, we can inject to do API client and we can call bar equal await to do API client dot check async. And let's make our function async task run async. So we can keep the naming convention. So now once we get the response, we can check if response dot status dot equals unhealthy. We need here to call Slack, but let's first test it out by doing log error to do dot API is unhealthy. Okay. Now let's run the application. Let's check the API. We are still unhealthy. Our database is still stopped. So let's run the to do dot function every minute. It will be triggered. Here we are getting, we are querying the health endpoint. And then 
we are getting to do.api is unhealthy. This is the second time that it triggered after one minute. And now we need to replace this one with an actual implementation for the Slack API. I already created a Slack app uh, and I enabled the webhook implementations. This is not a video on how to use Slack, so I'm going to be quick. So let's create a Slack API client. Same thing, we can inject HTTP client here. Let's create a new method called send message async. This is my application, my Slack application webhook URL, and I need to send a message to a channel called notification, and you can pass the message here. Now we can go to the program.cs and actually register our Slack API client. We add an HTTP client with the base address, which is hooks.slack.com. Go back to your function and let's inject this Slack API client, Slack API client. And here we can do something like send message. And we can say to do.api is unhealthy. Let's test this out. Run and run. Our app is still unhealthy. Still unhealthy. We should now receive a message on Slack. This is Slack and we got unhealthy. Let's stop everything. Let's try to reform, uh, reformat our message here, something like this. So we create a string builder, we add the status and for each entry that we have and it is unhealthy, go and append the key, the status and the exception. Let's test everything. And in Slack, we are getting to do API is unhealthy. SQL Server is unhealthy, and this is an uh, exception. Pretty cool. That's it for me, guys. Uh, make sure to check my other videos here, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.